Hi everyone! These are 5 tips on how to build teams properly to beat Spiral Abyss with 36 stars. So let's get on with it. Number 1. Don't simp too much into one character. I know that we all know that we simp to at least one character, and we probably focus so hard on building that character with their strongest possible artifacts and weapons. What happens there is that when we focus on just one character, we spend so much time and resources. Characters upgrade efficiency in terms of damage per resources spent decreases dramatically when approaching the maximum levels. Leveling up a character from level 0 to level 70 is equivalent to the resource spent from leveling up a character from level 80 to 90. Leveling characters doesn't make a significant change in power or damage. It's just about 1% to 4% damage increase. Leveling up a talent from level 0 to level 8 is equivalent to the resource spent from leveling up a talent from level 8 to level 9. The damage increase from these talents is about 2 to 10% in average. Farming for the perfect set of artifacts can take a month or two worth of resin. I hope you get my point here. Instead of leveling our favorite character from level 80 to 90, we could have leveled Beido from level 1 to level 70 real quick. And instead of leveling up our boy's talents from level 8 to 9, we could have leveled Fischl and Oz's talents from level 0 to level 8 real quick. And instead of farming Crimson Witch for Hu Tao, we could have farmed for Shimanawa and Emblem set all at the same time, with the same resources spent. We could have farmed for artifacts for Hu Tao, Xingqiu, Beiro, Raiden, Xiangling, and Yoimiya all in one domain, all in one resin, and all in one single effort. Number 2. Only 2 main DPS actually. We only need 2 main DPS each of different type of damage. For example, Ayaka for cryo damage and Yula for physical damage, or Xiao for animo damage and Noel for geo damage. Don't build the DPS characters of the same type of damage. The abyss requires different types of damage to work on. Don't ever build a pyro DPS as your first DPS. Or should I rephrase it better? Don't build Diluc, Hu Tao, Yanfei, Yoimiya, and Klee. Because we already have the strongest pyro DPS in the game for free. XL. She's the easiest character to build, the easiest world boss to farm, easiest weekly boss, the most efficient domain to farm. If you farm for her artifacts, which is the emblem set, you are already farming for other supports as well. And we got the strongest F2P weapon, the Gatch. So if you still haven't built Shangling, now is the time to build her. So build her now even if she's at constellation 0. Now if you already built Shangling and 2 other DPS that deals different types of damage, then you are now allowed to build other pyro DPS. Build your supports for real. Xingqiu is not just a hydro enabler. Xiangling is not just a pyro enabler. Beiro and Fischl is the same. And it's true to all other supports as well. Bennett is not just a healer. Sucrose, Kazuha, and Venti is not just for crowd control. Build them for damage. Build them as strong as your main DPS. You have to love them as much as you have loved your main DPS. We need to level them up at least to 80 and talent level 8 with decent energy recharge, crit stats, and level 90 weapons. Their weapons are very important. Level them to 90. I know it's a pain to mine crystals, so don't force yourself to mine. Just mine crystals for 5 to 10 minutes whenever you got time, and you'll slowly have the materials to level your weapons for your supports. Number 4. Don't use Crown of Insight. Don't use crown until you've made your support decent with good damage. Supports should deal half the damage of your whole team. Crown and character level are the most expensive upgrade that deals very little damage increase. You should use those resources first to your supports. So when should you crown? When your supports are at level 80 with level 8 talents with their level 90 weapons and with decent 200 to 250% energy recharge, 60% crit rate and 120% crit damage. Of course, this is just a rule of thumb for some characters. But I hope you get my point. Having good supports is the indicator that you can now afford to use your resources to max out your favorite characters. This is the most efficient way to build your teams in terms of damage per resources spent. Now before I give you the most important tip, please subscribe to this channel if you like this video. I'm doing contents like this, comparisons, 
showdowns, builds, and guides. I will triple crown child if I get 1000 subscribers. And lastly, experience. You need to try harder if you really want to beat it. Victory from your own blood and sweat is the most rewarding thing you could have in this game. That 12-3 display from your profile is something you should be proud of. The spiral abyss is tough and you have to endure it again and again. Try harder, don't give up, you will know from your own experience when you have enough damage to complete it in time. If you know that you got enough damage but still you can't beat it or always get wrecked, maybe you're lacking in skills. Through the process of trial and error, you will gain experience in battle, and your skill will grow. You will remember how to dodge properly, you will be accustomed to your team's rotations and your enemy's attacks. You have to try harder, my friend. Let me fall to my...